I believe that this nation should commit itself to achieving the goal before this decade is out of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the Earth. The National Academy of Engineering lists spacecraft as one of the top 20 engineering feats of the 20th century, and George Jeff's engineering brilliance was central to that feat. I used to make model airplanes like a lot of kids do, and, but I used to um, see uh, Bill Boeing uh, fly over Queen Anne Hill in late afternoons with the sun shining on an orange airplane, so I wanted to do that. <laughs> and I graduated uh, from the University of Washington in 1945 uh, with a BS from the uh, aeronautics uh, program. And uh, I came back after uh, the war and got a master's degree in uh, aeronautical engineering uh, in 1948. And I first met George when he was working on a paraglider for Gemini. Uh, from that point on, he was involved in all of the NASA space program. He started out being a, a project engineer and ended up being president of the company. So he's been involved in aviation and then subsequently involved in the space program uh, really throughout his whole career. A renowned engineer for the Apollo missions to the moon, Skylab, and Apollo Soyuz, he was later responsible for the design, development, manufacturing, and test of the first operational GPS satellites and for the space shuttle orbiter and main engines, the backbone of the U.S. manned space program for the past 30 years. And count on the fingers of one hand, the people that really got us to the moon, uh, George is one of those five. I was the program manager of the shuttle orbiter and integration efforts, and uh, then I was also the division president at the same time, which is interesting and important because it gave me a chance to, uh, to uh, have a lot of freedom in how I set up the organization and what freedom I gave the engineers that they hadn't had before in running major programs. It really brought the engineers into more of a controlling position, um, a real place in the sun in the corporation. And that was one of the kind of underlying themes of, of my career, aside from all the programs that uh, I was involved in. We were really trying to design uh, the architecture and the mission, as well as design the spacecraft. George's contribution to that, that period and the design and the execution of the missions was uh, significant. Take over from flight out here. Magnificent ventilation. Tranquility base, uh, Houston. Guidance. Sweet for me, Oh, that looks beautiful, Samuel. And here's a start beauty all its own. They wanted to get people to the moon. They wanted to get people into space and back, but they did not want to hurt them. They wanted nobody to be hurt if they could, and they didn't want to be the ones accountable for hurting them. Apollo was, uh, was a thrill in the, the precision of everything working the way it was supposed to work. The orbiter was a workhorse off the pad. It did everything it had to do during the boost phase. It was a ballerina in space, ballerina and more, a ballerina and a wonderful workstation. And it was a hypersonic flying marvel on reentry. The Apollo spacecraft that we took to the moon uh, would not be the spacecraft we ended up flying were not for George Jeff. Every part of that design, uh, the subsystems that the spacecraft had, the hatch that we had, the uh, environmental control systems, the communication systems, the propulsion systems on the spacecraft, uh, they were all George Jeff's. And it took a lot of people and a lot of time. And people say, why do you need so many people on these programs? I said, man, I'll tell you, you need a lot because of the the basics of the program, time, schedule, cost, etc., and to get it done. But you need an awful lot when you try and approach perfection. Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. All engine running. We have a liftoff. It spoils you on the one hand uh, because uh, sometimes it's difficult to deal with people on problems that don't think the same way as engineers think. You know. That's why, they, that's why they call us nerds, I guess. I don't know. But anyhow, um, uh, I think it's a, a, a wonderful career field. Not only is it uh, offered the opportunity to work with wonderful people in teams, wonderful talents, to get major things accomplished as part of those teams, 
it also gives you the opportunity with the, that kind of training in your mind to be able to conceive of uh, innovative things that in fact can be fundamental to new things that you're trying to do with the basic problem you're working, serendipity, you know?